Chapter 35 Cyril's face looked like a jack-o'-lantern that had been left out too many days past Halloween, half rotten with sunken eyes and a drooping smile. Is that water? he asked. His voice was weak and raspy. His lips were so pale that they were almost white and his tongue seemed to flop around uselessly in his mouth as he spoke, as if it kept getting in the way. It's empty, said Standy. He stared at Zero, not quite believing that he was real. I tried to bring you the whole water truck, but, he smiled sheepishly, I drove it into a hole. I can't believe you're... Me neither, said Zero. Come on, we've got to get back to camp. Zero shook his head. I'm not going back. You have to. We both have to. You want some sploosh? Zero asked. What? Zero shaded his eyes with his forearm. It's cooler under the boat, he said. Stanley watched Zero crawl back through his hole. It was a miracle he was still alive, but Stanley knew he would have to get him back to camp soon, even if he had to carry him. He crawled after him and was just able to squeeze his body through the hole. He never would have fit when he first came to Camp Green Lake. He'd lost a lot of weight. As he pulled himself through, his legs stuck something sharp, struck some, something sharp and hard. It was a shovel. For a second, Stanley wondered how he got there, but then remembered that Zero had taken it with him after striking Mr. Pendansky. It was cooler under the boat, which was half buried in the dirt. There were enough cracks and holes in the bottom of the boat, now the roof, to provide light and ventilation. He could see empty jars scattered about. Zero held a jar in his hand and grunted as he tried to unscrew the lid. What is it? Sploosh! His voice was strained as he worked on the jar. That's what I call it. They were buried under the boat. He still couldn't get the lid off. I found sixteen jars. Here, hand me the shovel. Stanley didn't have a lot of room to move. He reached behind him, grabbed the wooden end of the shovel and held it out to Zero, blade first. Sometimes you just have to, Zero said. Then he hit the jar against the blade of the shovel, breaking the top of the jar clean off. He quickly brought the jar to his mouth and licked the sploosh off the jagged edges before it spilled. Careful, Stanley warned. Zero picked up the cracked lid and licked the sploosh off that as well. Then he handed the broken jar to Stanley. Drink some.